What's up guys? Today we're gonna do something a little different. Uh, these are kind of our FAQs, questions we get a lot. Um, so instead of answering them individually, I can just refer people to this video from now on. Uh, but one thing I get is how to deal with fear, nervousness, and anxiety uh, for a basketball game and for like higher pressure situations. And one thing you gotta understand about, about fear is what it's triggering. Um, what parts of your brain and what parts of your body are being triggered by um, by that fear response. So what you have to understand is it's your amygdala that's out of control. And your amygdala is a tiny part of your brain that basically moderates how we respond emotionally to stimuli. It's like a threat detector. In an amygdala hijack, it activates your body's fight flight response, your survival response. You don't need this in basketball. And that's because it's gonna make your scope of vision smaller. Uh, your ability to think and process is diminished. And we've all been there before. And that's why I believe that the most clutch players in the game have less sensitive amygdalas. In other words, their amygdala needs more stimulation to operate normally. So for example, Tom Brady is a guy who deliberately trains his amygdala by uh, being in a flotation tank. And studies have shown that this practice quite literally shrinks the size of your amygdala. In other words, he's controlling it, not the other way around. Uh, Free Solo, the, the guy who climbed uh, El Capitan, they did an fMRI on this guy and his amygdala doesn't fire like a normal person's, which is fascinating. So how do we train that amygdala? One thing is just getting more experience in high pressure situations. This will desensitize you to that pressure. And this is a concept that's called extinction in behavioral psychology, or weakening of a conditioned response to a stimulus over time due to exposure to it. So playing in those games and being in the moment and going into it, understanding what you're getting yourself into, the consequences and the stakes of the game, that's gonna really help you. Honestly, if you accept defeat in a lot of times early, look at Dirk Nowitzki in uh, 2000, what was it, 2007, 2006. Uh, he, he had a huge, he choked. Uh, he choked in, in the NBA Finals, but he came back and actualized himself as a player. I think part of the reason because of that. Uh, same with LeBron James. In his first season with the Miami Heat, when they ironically lost in the championship to Dirk Nowitzki and the Mavs, they got all the way to the finals and he choked in the championship. But I do think that without that experience, he wouldn't be the LeBron James we know today. That's when he went on his social media lockout, started reading the Hunger Games, things like that. Uh, so the more we're exposed to these situations, the less control, anxiety, and fear have over our performance. And the other way is, is meditation and mindfulness. So there's, again, studies, I'll link them in the description, but there's studies that show the more you meditate, the more you use mindfulness in your uh, training. And mindfulness is essentially just focus in the present moment without any judgment. Take that element of judgment out of the equation. And this will actually thicken your prefrontal cortex, the highest evolved structure in your brain. And what's interesting is your prefrontal cortex is actually connected to your amygdala. And it has the ability to keep it in check by overriding it. And a lot of times it's just our thought patterns that are creating stressful situations out of a game where we're essentially just putting a ball through a net. Our amygdalas can't really tell the difference between everyday issues and life-threatening situations. And that's pretty much just because it was evolved during a time where we had to like worry about getting eaten by saber-toothed tigers and stuff like that. And uh, so what we wanna do is to calm that, get it under control. And I think the combination between practical in-game experience and meditation, that's the best way to really, really develop that strong bulletproof mind. 